series between these two teams. The Cardinals start play a half game in front of Milwaukee. Milwaukee on a nine game road trip. They have an off day today. Brendan Donovan will get the start at third base tonight. And with Jim Hayes, Brad Thompson, I'm Dan McLaughlin. And great to have you with us in a hot, steamy night here at Bush Stadium. And making his starting Major League debut. It is the left-hander, Zach Thompson. Well, Zach Thompson, pretty impressive in his Major League debut. The Hyundai pitch arsenal here for Thompson. He's got that good, hard fastball running up there in the upper 90s. His curveball, that's his secondary pitch in the changeup that he makes is in as well. I thought that was a very good pitch against the right-handers. Tucapita Marcano looks at a strike, and we are underway. Marcano coming off a three-hit game yesterday in a loss against the Atlanta Braves and the Pirates have dropped six in a row the 0 1 and a fastball just missed Derek Shelton the lineup a lot of young kids Marcano then the veteran Reynolds key Brian Hayes Chavis Vogelback Castillo Sawinski Heineman and Chang well Thompson three pitches pumping strikes and it's early, obviously, with only three pitches. But even in the starts in the minor leagues, Brad, that would be a concern. He would fall behind on a lot of hitters. That's not happening now. Well, I think it's one of the biggest keys when you get to the big leagues is being aggressive. I think there's a tendency for young pitchers to feel like they have to be fine, to feel like they have to be perfect. They have to do more. They couldn't be further from the truth. You just go out there and pound the zone, be aggressive. Yeah, don't miss over the middle of the plate, but it doesn't always have to be on a corner. Sometimes pick a third of the plate. He's got a very good breaking ball. We saw that in his Major League debut. And there it is. Taken low. To Capita Marcano. Unique first name. But that uh, is the name of the hometown he was born in. In Venezuela. Fastball outside. And a full count. And the 3 2 pitch, Zach Thompson. And a leadoff walk. And the Cardinal defense tonight with Brendan Donovan at third base. And still Arenado in the lineup as the DH. O'Neill, Carlson, Yepes in the outfield. Donovan, Edmond, Gorman, and Goldie on the infield. Andrew Kisner is behind the plate. Well, that's not what you want to see, a leadoff walk to start this game. No, to your point, first three pitches, you know, even the second one that he missed, the 0-1 pitch, it was 95 on the corner, was ahead, and then ultimately fell behind and lost him. And now it is Brian Reynolds collected 10 hits in the four-game series against Atlanta. It's a, just the fifth time since 2010 that a Pirates position players collected double digit hits in a single series last to do it Adam Frazier in July of 2019 Frazier now with the Padres and that pitch taken down and in well this is a guy that you can guarantee and it's already happened all off season long but as the trade deadline approaches everybody's going to be calling about Brian Reynolds I mean this is a, a piece that could help any team out there but if you're a young team that's looking to rebuild it's also a nice thing to have a cornerstone well, the Cardinals, after the four turn behind Dakota uh, yesterday, they have induced 56 ground ball double plays, third most in all the baseball behind Colorado and Baltimore. Really just one bad inning for Dakota Hudson. Lost his command a bit, and it cost him. Yeah, that fourth inning just got away from him a little bit. It's going to happen every once in a while. Little chopper towards second. Gorman, quick flip. And not in time to get Reynolds. They will get the lead man. And the batter will be Key Brian Hayes. Brad Thompson's Toyota key to the game. For Zach Thompson, it's stay cool. You remember after his Major League debut, he was talking about it. He said, I was cool as a cucumber. And he was serious. Like, he, he had no fear going into Wrigley Field, making his four innings. This isn't about the heat today. This is about just staying cool at home. First Major League start. Now he's got his family in town. Everybody's here looking for it. You just stay within yourself in this game, just like he did in his debut, and he's going to be just fine. 
And a ground ball left side. Glove by Donovan. And no turn, but they will get the lead runner. Nicely done, Donovan to Gorman. What well, good job here by Thompson. First of all, getting a couple of ground balls when he needed them. Donovan does a great job of ranging to his right, make that play, cut down the lead runner. And all of a sudden, that leadoff walk, feeling pretty good about things now with two outs. I like the fact that Gorman put it in his back pocket, too. Sometimes young players try to do a little too much. Did not attempt the throw. There's Michael Chavis. He's had good numbers against St. Louis. Eight for 16, couple of doubles, and against left-handed pitching, three of his five home runs have come against southpaws and hitting 333 against the lefties. And that is foul back. May surprise you, but the Pirates have popped 15 home runs in their last 12 games. Not a lot of household names in this lineup, but 15 in the last 12. Yeah, and you, you kind of wonder what that is. First of all, you got a lot of young guys that have probably got some big swings. You also think about some games they might be in where they're behind and the opposition pumping a lot of strikes. And a good fastball up at 94, and it's nothing in two. But either way, to your point, with those numbers, you got to be careful still. I don't care if it's the Pirates. I don't care if it's the Dodgers. These are major league hitters. You make mistakes, they're going to make you pay. Thompson, June 3rd, at Wrigley, making his debut. Four innings, three hits, gave up a run. And earned the say by completing the, the final four innings of what was a 14-5 win. Not a bad way to break into the big leagues. And there's another Thompson that knows a thing or two about that. Not a bad you. Way. Yeah, not a bad way to get that first save. No. Get in there for a few innings. Yeah, I knew I knew that when we scored about 11 runs after two innings, I'm like, man, I might get in this one. This yeah. might be my kind of day. Mine was against the Padres at home, though. I got to pitch at home in my debut. But it was almost like a home game for Zach Thompson in Chicago. Grew up a Cubs fan. Had been to the park tons of time as a kid. From Selma, Indiana. We've had the chance to visit with Zach. Very likable young man. Former top choice of the Cardinals, 19th overall in the 2019 draft, pitched in the SEC at Kentucky. Last year, he was 2-10 with an ERA over 7 at Memphis. And the check on the runner, Key Brian Hayes, he has seven stolen bases this year. Went to a point, Brad, that they took him down to Jupiter in the pitching lab located at the spring training facility of the Cardinals to try to figure out what was going on. Yeah, he was just, he was off mechanically. The velocity was off for him a bit. I mean, you think about it, too. It was a pretty big jump up to the AAA level. But, man, by the end of the year, and specifically even after the season was over, getting to the pitch lab, went to the Arizona Fall League, looked a lot different. The velocity is back. His delivery looks very repeatable right now. So it's good to see him here, first of all. And another one of Randy Flores, the scouting director for the Cardinals and assistant GM, another one of his picks. And a strikeout for Thompson. His first ever at Bush Stadium. And the Cardinals are hoping many more to come. Tommy Edmond, no the top of the St. Louis lineup, followed by Nolan Gorman and Paul Goldschmidt. Nolan Arenado homered here yesterday. Tyler O'Neill. Brendan Donovan, Juan Yepes, Dylan Carlson, and Andrew Kisner. We have seen throughout the, the summer months now, beginning the 645 starts. Idea was to get the, the kids to the ballpark as early as they can as Mitch Keller gets the call tonight. ERA over five, he's two and five. But with the early starts, it can be very, very tough on the right fielder. So, you know, it's 30 minutes difference from the 7.15 to 6.45, and that sun can be very, very tough on a right fielder. There it is. That's the look right now of Jack Sawinski. There are a lot of things that you can prepare for. That's not one of them. You know, before you get to a new ballpark, say, oh, these dimensions are weird. Let's hit some balls off the wall, see how they uh, bounce. You really can't account for the sun and what it's going to be at a certain time. 
see him battling already there. The sun in right field. One ball and one strike on Tommy Edmond. He had the walk off homer on Saturday. And the 1 1 pitch. The swing and a miss. Tommy is hit safely in 10 straight against the Pirates. He's got five hits on the homestand, hitting 385. And the 1 2. Rolled over and a foul ball. It was a, a tough loss for the Cardinals. They got into the bullpen yesterday of the Cincinnati Reds. Yepes two run homer to pull within one and Ollie telling us both last night at Adam Wainwright's charity function along with Skip Schumacher many others but he said man that's one I wanted. I wanted the sweep I want to be greedy. It's okay to be greedy. And the one two hit into the shift. And Chang makes the play and that's the first out. Monday pitch arsenal on the Pittsburgh right-hander Mitch Keller. Keller's got the four-seamer. He'll run up there 94 to 98. Has that really good curveball that he's shown you already. Slider change up as well. That's four pitches that he ends up throwing for strikes. He's made back-to-back -back starts of five or more innings, two earned runs or less, and 95 pitches. So comes into this. Particular start throwing the ball pretty well, and there's a strike to Nolan Gorman. 11 innings, three earned a lot in the, those two starts. That's it. Outside, and it's one ball and one strike. Gorman, two for 11, no extra base hits on the homestand. Those two hits coming in back to back plate appearances over the weekend. Line back and foul off the screen, and it's a count of one ball and two strikes. That's one right there. You think Nolan Gorman might want back 94 down the middle. We're seeing a lot of teams pound him in. It looks like Keller's trying to stay away a little bit. And the one two pitch. Shift on the right side. First time through a lineup. Teams have gotten to Keller hitting above 300. And then the second and third time through he gets better. Two two. And Gorman hits it down the right field line, and it hooks foul off the sidewall and bouncing into the seats in right. So last time out for Mitch Keller was the eighth against the Tigers in interleague play. Six innings, four hits, gave up a run of 95 pitches. But inside the Central Division, really struggled. Third highest ERA against those divisional opponents. Foul back. Well, a little bit surprising, too, with that, isn't it? I mean, look at the division. Pirates obviously doesn't get to face his own team, but the Cubs are not really an offensive juggernaut. Certainly the Reds aren't either. But there is something different about those division games. And the 2-2 pitch. Gorman, a base hit. I'll say it again. When it comes off his bat, it's just loud. Even that one right there. Well, it seems like everything, and uh, we live in an age of exit velocity and information right off the bat, but it seems like everything that he hits is 100 or more. This one, 101 mile an hour off the bat, and I like seeing him do this. Go this way with it. Let the ball travel a little bit. That pitch is middle, middle away, and he just hits a nice line drive the other way. And it brings in Paul Goldschmidt at the day off yesterday. And the first pitch. Way outside and low. Gaudy numbers in his career against Pittsburgh. And then this season, he's 8 for 18 with a couple of doubles. But a 313 average, the 18 home runs in his career against the Pirates. And the 1 0 pitch. One of those home runs, I recall, finding the water. And a right handed batter to do that. That's tough to do. Was he the first right-handed batter to do so? Believe so. Into the Allegheny with a splash. And a 2-0 pitch to Goldie sitting on 12 home runs. Now 3-0, Nolan Arnato is on deck. Paul Goldschmidt has 14% of the club's hits. 14%. He's got 72 hits this year. 
And the 3 0 pitch to Goldie. Thirty two doubles that leads the club the. Walks he leads in that category as well. And now it's three and two is on base percentage tops. For the Cardinals at 411 most home runs most runs batted in. He's been pretty good hadn't he. Whew. Well you look at the average in the on base percentage those are both tops. In baseball I mean in yep. the league so he is uh, he is putting together something special yet again. And a 3 2 pitch. Gorman is running and the pitch taken for a ball. Runners at first and second for Nolan Arnato. Pirates defensively as we go around the horn. Presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Marcano in left, Reynolds in center, Sawinski battling the sun in right. Hayes, Castillo, Chang, Chavis on the infield. Heineman is behind the plate. Nolan Arenado, a home run yesterday, he scored in three straight. And when he's been the designated hitter, he's seven for 13. Two runners on, and the first pitch to Nolan. Bounced and kept in front by Heineman. Well, we Nolan, saw him with the uh, the Cardinals for a little bit. Yeah, Nolan did hit that home run yesterday as you mentioned he also had two balls that I'm pretty sure he thinks he should have hit out of the ballpark popped up a couple that were right there for him just a hair off even with the home run yesterday a little bit a little bit off on a couple of these pitches and the 1 0 pitch to Arenado up and in and yesterday home run number 11 for Nolan hit it high hit it far hit it out. And already a mound visit for the Pirates. They've fallen behind here on Nolan Arenado. Two balls, no strikes. That follows the single by Gorman. And the walk to Goldie. Well, you're playing with fire right here. And that's part of the conversation. Look, they're trying to get him settled down, trying to get him around the zone. They're also probably trying to not get him in a 3 nothing hole. And that's what can happen if you leave something near the middle of the plate for Nolan Arenado. How about this Arenado of the 11 home runs 10 have come with men on base he's hitting 314 with men on right guy right spot so a very down May for Nolan one of the worst months that he's had as a professional how did you bounce back from that well so far so good in June and the 2 0 pitch to the Cardinal DH tonight Arenado hits it. Up the middle, snagged by Castillo, and they'll turn two. Nifty play. Castillo and a turn by Chang at second. And it goes 6 4 3 on the double play. Tops among major league rookies and fifth overall. Donovan said this about battling in every at bat. I think that was from a young age. I always like to see pitches, but don't get me wrong. I'm willing to swing early in the count if it's my pitch. I just try to make everything a battle and make the pitcher work just as hard as I do. Denny, pretty impressive stuff from Brendan. And he has been an impressive player. No doubt about that. He's been fun to watch. That's not that's not a rookie approach. No. That's that's like talking to a guy that's played in this league for six, seven years that has an idea of what he's doing like that. And you can just see it when he's up there. They're not like emergency hacks that Brendan Donovan is taking up there and just barely fighting for his life. He's in control. The pitches that are even close, he's fouling them off or he's taking it, but his weight's still back. He's ready to do damage up there. Those are the guys you hate facing. I bet. Well, Castillo has been in a rut. Two for his last 27. At shortstop for the Pirates, and their fans are clamoring for their top prospect, who is six foot seven, plays short, hits a bunch of home runs. They want to see him up at the big leagues. Yeah, there were 
plenty of reports thinking they might see him as early as this uh, this upcoming weekend. Who knows if that ends up happening for uh, for the Pirates? But he's very talented. Word is though, Dan, as we were talking to some people around the organization, that still has a little bit of work to do in the field. Which you know, when you get to the big leagues, you want to be as complete of a pro uh, project as you can be. How about six foot seven and playing short? It works nowadays. Yeah, right? it just depends how. Uh, to me, I, I hear range. In the air out to deep left and a home run, and it's one nothing Pirates. Diego Castillo. And he's saying, hold the phones on that youngster. I still have uh, a say in this. You do that, you stay in the big leagues. Keep working on those ground balls, young man. <laughs> Ball was crushed out to left. His third home run, he's driven in 11. He made his major league debut, as you remember, Brad, against the Cardinals and got his first ever major league hit off of T.J. McFarland and really had some competitive good at bats against St. Louis. Yeah, he did. And this is just a really good swing. Fastball elevated up and in, gets his hands to it. Here's Sawinski. He's a Chicago native, top pick by the Padres and then brought over in the deal from San Diego that involved Adam Frazier. So you have Marcano and Sawinski from that deal in the starting lineup tonight for Pittsburgh. It is really interesting when you look at just how teams are built right and the, the Pirates they build a little bit differently than the Cardinals. Do you think of the Pirates being a team that it's homegrown their roster is all players from within. They've only got eight homegrown players on their 40 man roster. They have 20 players on their 40 man roster via the trade. It's tough to rebuild. It really is. And that is line foul. Just think about that just for quick comparison with the Cardinals. The Cardinals have nine players on their 40 man via the trade. 23 homegrown talent. I'll tell you just how important the draft is for the Cardinals. We continue to see it time and time again. Obviously on the mound here. First round pick in 2019. Zach Thompson. And the one two pitch to Jack Sawinski take it high. So the home run was hit on a 94 mile an hour fastball from Thompson. And that is taken in. Three and two with one out and nobody on. Vogel back rounded out on the first pitch of the inning. Castillo the home run. But be careful with Sawinski. He leads National League rookies in home runs. He's got eight. And now he strikes out. Second strikeout for Thompson. Thompson just spotting up 93 right on the outer half. Just tell right there, maybe Sawinski's looking for something else or looking in a little bit further. Not able to get to that one. Already leaning out of the box a little bit. Really nice pitch by Zach. And now Heineman claimed off of waivers from Toronto. He's a switch hitter. And with the Pirates from this side of the plate, 5 of 22, 1 for 20 on the other side. Off speed floats in there, and that's strike one. So has anybody come to you and said, hey, are you related to Zach? Or they've come to Zach and go, hey, do you know BT? Is that your cousin? What, what's the deal here? We were joking about it the other day. He said he had a few people reach out to him asking if we were related. He didn't claim me. I claimed him after his uh, after his debut. I said, yeah, that's my cousin right there. Now, if he would have gotten lit up. Oh, I still would have claimed him. You sure? Maybe. I don't know. We'll never know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a 1 1. And it's outside, two bowls and one strike. Well, you got to like the makeup of Zach Thompson. We talked about his debut and just how cool and collected he was. You see it here, you know, in this game. Gave up the solo shot. Who cares? Getting right back to work. And that's back to him. He'll spin and throw and makes the play. Home run to hit by Castillo. Midway through two, one nothing Pittsburgh. East one game. They have a young man that is scheduled to play at some point in this series. That'll be another debut when he does make that major league debut. 
So a lot of young kids getting a look at them, see what they got. Oh, and that's kind of part of it. It's very difficult. You look at Derek Shelton, you look at his staff and the job that they have. The, this Pirates team's not going to go out and win 100 games. So how do you how do you evaluate what they're doing? And to me, it's just do your younger players get better? How do they advance throughout the season? How do you navigate that and help them build things? Because a lot of guys are probably at this level right now before they should be or maybe would be on other teams. But it's a prime opportunity for them to grow as well. Tyler O'Neill returned for the I.L. six days ago and he has eight hits and six runs batted in starting to find it here maybe I think so and the one one now I, I tell you about Pittsburgh five players 23 or younger playing at least one game tied for the most in baseball or well, they're tied with the Cardinals and the Cardinals are in first place and it's Matthew Liberator who will go tomorrow Ivan Herrera Nolan Gorman Andre Palante he'll pitch in this series Dylan Carlson pretty pretty good group isn't it yes pretty good group I think the difference is oftentimes when you have a bunch of young players is what's around them you know what else do you have I, I think that if you just throw out an entire team of young guys it, it's difficult to win because they're not around guys that know how to win but when you have guys like Nolan Arenado and Goldie and Yachty and Pujols and Bueno You've got direction everywhere you look of how to navigate the big leagues. How to be a big leaguer between the white lines and away from the field. Yep. There's Brendan Donovan hitting 295. And Donovan at third base tonight. So Jimmy talked about it since May 10th, 438, the on base percentage. That leads the Cardinals, and that's fourth in baseball. Now that's also the best in the Cardinals against a guy that just finished being on base, you know, every <laughs> single game in Goldie. Okay, so here we go. One and two. Yeah, a little over under five more pitches. I'll take the over. Like Probably. Unless he gets a hit first. I mean, he just makes the opposition work so much. And you can see it here, just how calm he is in the box. Very rarely do you see him jumpy and there's a breaking ball down in the dirt you'll see the weight stay back as he recognizes these pitches and they one two just like that That's recognition it. of the breaking ball That's it saw it out of the hand I'm so glad I went glad it went that way boy looked like a genius yeah guy. that was way better <laughs> now the two two to Donovan what a shock three and two this guy's fun to watch, man. I, I love watching him play. I really do. Uh, the the staff has talked about it. And Ollie's talked about it. I know John Mozalak has talked about it as well. Like they're not necessarily surprised at what he's done because of as another one ripped down the line because of all the reports they were getting last year about him and the impression that he made in spring training. I mean, this guy just understood it and, and fit in right away. Off the line at third, 3-2. It'll take it that way. Hayes had just moved. And now Donovan thinking of two. On his way in there, and he is saved. He avoided the tag. It's a double for Donovan. Looked like the throw beat him, but he reads where the tag is, where the throw is going, goes to the outside portion of the bag and legs out a double. Unbelievable again, this at bat. He gets something up away from him. What does he do? Well, he just goes away with it, and he is busting hard out of the box right here. Now, you're, you're right. He is way off the line right here, but I still didn't think that Donovan was going to be able to make it. He gets that hand in there just before the tag. Just good base running, very good slide to wow. the outside. And it brings in Juan Yepes. So, Brad, that was a seven pitch at bat, four pitches after a two strike count. And he gets a double. Yes, he does. There's so much value in what he's doing and we're spending a lot of time talking about him at the plate and all the pitches that he sees you can put him anywhere on the diamond 
Yepes hits it off of Keller. And they'll still get the outs off of Keller. Chang then had to change directions to make the play, and that saves a run. Takes a hit away from Juan Yepes. Yeah, I really thought the Cardinals were actually going to catch a break here as this one went off of Keller. Thought it was going to slow it down enough, but not the case. Because if it goes right through, he's standing right there behind it to field it. But Chang still had time to make this play. It's a really good play. Yes, it is. And now with two outs, Dylan Carlson, who has reached base in 18 straight games against the Pirates with a 455 on base percentage. Pirates with a shift. That's where Dylan sometimes just has that easy swing and takes it the other way against a shift. He's very good at doing that. Yes, he is. Take what the pitcher is going to give you. I mean, if you get nothing but away, well, do it. Hit it that way. And the 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Andrew Kisner on deck. Going with the high socks look. Maybe trying to change his luck. Whatever it takes. Got to do it. it Got to mix it up every once in a while. And the 2 0 pitch to Dylan Carlson. Here it comes. And a strike. Keller in his career against the Cardinals, five starts, two and one, and a 4-2-6 ERA. Pitched back on April 9th here at Bush, went only four innings, gave up four earned, and took the loss in that start. The 2-1, two, 2-2. Two two. Just joined us. It's a home run by Diego Castillo to give the Pirates an early lead. His third of the year. Two and two the count on Carlson. On a hot night here at Bush. The 2-2. Two -two. And Carlson hits it into the shift and Chang is there. He makes the play. The Cardinals strand a runner. 1 0 Pittsburgh. A for Anaheim. There's Yu Chang acquired from Cleveland, and he hits it down the right field line and out of play. And to remember Daryl and what he meant to this franchise, Cardinals from 2003 through 19 had the Daryl Kyle Award given annually to a Cardinal. It's a vote of his teammates. The qualities that Daryl brought to the clubhouse every day. That's well hit into center. Carlson makes the catch on the run. And a five play and a good jump by Dylan Carlson in center. Those qualities, great teammate, friend, father, and a humble man. And that was Daryl Kyle. At Dan, I, I never had the good fortune to meet Daryl Kyle, and I, I heard nothing but fantastic things about him as a teammate as a leader I know that you got to spend plenty of time when, when you think about DK what are the first things that pop up for you gamer yeah. always wanted the ball and there were times that I know he was not feeling right and he took the ball and he would tell his teammates and the guys on the pitching staff you are not going to feel 100 percent but this is the responsibility of being a pitcher in the big leagues may not feel great May not have your best stuff. That's fought off and a base hit into shallow center. But you better take the ball every fifth day because that is what you are paid to do. He would say that. You don't hear many guys say, hey, you're paid to be out there every day. Rain or shine, hurt, not hurt, feeling good, bad, and different. You go, you take the ball and you go get it and you get the job done. And I think that's the highest compliment you can give a guy that had been in the league for a long time and was pitching banged up and still was getting outs. Yeah, a guy that answers the bell, right? That, yep. That's what every staff needs is somebody to lead like that. And then when you have that guy, it makes everybody else want to do it. Like sometimes you don't even have to say anything just to watch him go out there and do it. As a young guy on the staff, you say, I, I need to do what he's doing. Absolutely. I also think I have a great curveball. That was rediscovered here in 
St. Louis. He had very good years with Houston, and then he signed, went to Colorado, and you go there, and that's where curveballs go to not. Yeah, yeah. not curve it anymore. Yeah. yeah, and so he got knocked around there, and the Cardinals got him back here. He got the confidence back in his curveball, and he was fantastic. I mean, the curveball he had. I love watching Wayno's, but his was right there too. And a 1-0 pitch. Obviously, he was very close to our partner Jim Edmonds and Matty Moe. Matty Moe was very, very close to Daryl Kyle. And there's a look at Adam Wainwright. And congratulations to Adam and Jenny and their family for the great event last night at uh, Top Golf to benefit his foundation, Big League Impact. It was sold out. Many of the players came out and. Uh, Fun time had by all. Yeah, you were talking earlier about leaders and on and off the field. I think uh, that a lot of young guys got an opportunity last night at the event for Big League Impact to see what a true leader looks like. It's not just there. It's not just in the uniform. It's a leader in the community. It's a leader that shows you how to use your platform. Broke his bat. Slowly hit. Gorman gets the lead man. Nice play. Nolan Gorman to his left. Make sure that there is not a man in scoring position. So Tommy Edmond right away saying nice work right there. That would have been an easy enough play for him to go to first base. Say, okay, well, I can just go get this guy. Well, so I'm working on this. You know, he's been working on it every single day of going to that side, turning and making that good feed to shortstop. Adam got up and um, I had the chance to interview him with the, the crowd there and Tommy Edmond. Introduced the players and the former players that were in attendance and it's impressive to listen to Tommy and, and Adam speak from the heart about why it's so important and the the mission of big league impact not just here locally but worldwide but uh, here locally he's feeding a lot of kids and especially during covid when there was no school that's how a lot of kids were relying on getting a lunch getting a breakfast and Wayno took care of that so two outs and a runner at first and an off speed pitch drops in for a strike he Brian Hayes Get into a fielder's choice his first time up. Leads the Pirates in on base percentage at 361. Leads them and runs batted in with 21. Only two home runs, which is a bit surprising. Think of him as maybe developing more and getting stronger in that body. Great defensive player. And probably will hit for more power. I'm quite sure the home runs are going to come for Hayes. Yes. He's got that good natural stroke, gap to gap power. Ball comes off his bat well. And the 1 1 is in the air out to left. Tyler O'Neill under it and makes the catch. Home half of the third coming up, and it's 1 0. We believe. Not surprising right here in St. Louis. Do they, do they win a bunch of them, maybe? Went 15 and 11. Okay, look, it's a hot weather team. We always do that. A strike to Kisner. One for his last 28 with nine strikeouts. Think about the wool uniforms these guys used to wear. Oof. But that was a that was a different kind of tough. There was no thought of, uh, oh, should I take a rest day? Is there? Uh, I'll do some load management right now. Skip, I need a day. Yeah, there was no such thing as load management. Oh, you need a day, do you? Yeah, that's fine. We got somebody else. Yeah. A ball and two strikes. It's the famous All-Star game at Bush Stadium. One of the hottest days ever for a baseball game. You guys talked about having a miserable experience, but honored to play in the Midsummer Classic. Kisner, a base hit into center. Boy, did he need that. So leadoff hit for Andrew Kisner. Top of the lineup rolls in. And here's a look at Bounty Quick Stats. Tommy Edmond nationally ranks among primary second basemen and the shortstops. Not bad. Guy's just a great player. I mean, wherever you put Tommy Edmond, he's going to get the job done. You put him up to bat, he's a tough out. You get him on base, he's a threat to steal. He'll take first to third. He'll score in the gap. I mean, he does it all. 
And Edmond hits it up the middle. Can they turn two? Not a chance. And Chavis down. I think that got him on the forehead, maybe. Yeah, bad bounce rolled up. I don't know if it caught him near the eye. Diego Castillo takes it himself, throws it on the run. You know, the reality there with Castillo and how he made that throw. With the slide rule the way that it is, there's really no reason for him to make that throw or any middle infielder off balance anymore. Because if if they slide too hard into you, it's going to be a double play. Yeah. And if you decide to throw it low, like a Cardinals Hall of Famer on a turn and Julian Javier, the runner has to get down in a hurry. But watch how he puts himself so off balance instead of just going straight to the back, maybe. Well, I, I think that it's kind of one of those plays he knew he had to be fast, so his momentum was carrying him that way. Maybe he didn't need to yeah. do the jump throw. Either way, I don't think you're getting Tommy Edmond on I that either. play either yeah. way. But you know what I mean? I mean, now if you're a sure. second baseman and your back is to that runner, you shouldn't really worry about him coming in. No, I wouldn't think you, you can't. You can't blow up the, the shortstop or second baseman anymore. Well, he says he's all right. Let's see if Tommy wants to do some running with 15 stolen bases. There's Nolan Gorman with one out and a runner. At first base, Heineman is 0 for 6 in throwing out base stealers this year. And the first pitch taken high. Wonder what the, the pressure is like for a Nolan Gorman when Edmund is at first and the first couple of pitches of the at bat and saying, Well, I'm going to give him a shot to get in scoring position. You know what? If I'm Nolan Gorman, I'm sure the staff is talking to him. I would say, look, you just take your at bat. Yeah. You just go ahead. You got something you want to take a swing at, take a swing. If Tommy wants to make a jump at it, let him take a jump at it. But I don't want to put any more on him. I want him to go out there and just focus on the task at hand. Just like we saw him doing his first at bat. Got that good fastball middle away, let it travel, drove it the other way. And the 1 1 pitch to Nolan Gorman. Edmund leaning, not running. Hit out to right. And this ball will be caught. Sawinski is there. Edmund back to the bag at first. And while we have a moment, quick word from BJC. Getting back to normal feels like so much more than just normal. BJC is committed to improving the health of our patients and community. Here's Paul Goldschmidt. Walked back in the first. He now has 33 on the year. Very good with two outs, hitting 361 with four home runs and 10 doubles. He's got 19 doubles this year. And the first pitch taken low. The pitching of Pittsburgh comes in 25th in baseball and team ERA, about four and a half. The starters is 24th, near five, but the relievers a little bit better, right around four, middle of the pack of Major League Baseball. Yeah, those guys have been holding their own. Kept in front, two balls and no strikes. We were talking earlier about the trade deadline with the Pirates, and I'm sure a lot of teams going to be calling for Brian Reynolds. I'm pretty sure the phone's going to be ringing for at least one member of their bullpen in David Bednar. He is good. I like that guy. Me too. Pirates come in 11 and 17 this year on the road. Only Cincinnati, Detroit, Kansas City have fewer road wins. And the 2-0 pitch to Goldie on its way. Hit up the middle. Diving stop by Chang and no chance to get out. It's an infield hit. Yu Chang has been busy at second base tonight. That 
is a nice job. He has some range of far away on the other side of the bag to flag that one, but he was looking for Castillo at second. Wasn't going to be able to get Gorman there as he got a good jump on this one. And you weren't going to be able to, even if he popped up clean on that side of the bag, there's no way he's getting Goldsmith. Well, Arnado came up with runners at first and second, first time up, one out. And Keller had fallen behind on Arnado, a mound visit, then the next pitch, a 6 4 3 double play. Two outs, two on. And Arnado hits it high in the air. Out to right center. And it is caught. Reynolds, Sawinski, a little hesitation between the two. A drive visit redcrossblood.org for more information or to make an appointment. That is pulled foul. Michael Chavis struck out swinging first time up. Had the opportunity and the pleasure to meet truly a hero in officer Colin Ledbetter. And thank you to the men and women that protect us. That's fouled back. Chris Rock, the comedian, is in the house tonight. A pretty good round of applause for Chris Rock in this one. He was performing, I believe it was last night. A little flare into shallow right. And it drops in for a hit. Not the best of jumps we've seen from Yepes. I'll say this though, he's played fine defensively as Chris Rock was uh, introduced to the crowd here at Bush Stadium between innings. Lead off base hit, Chavis. That was a pretty good pitch right there by Thompson. Ended up just getting in on the hands of Chavis. Might have a double play candidate here. Daniel Vogel back home run on Saturday and that was his first since May 14th. He's got seven this year. Went after the first pitch first time up. And takes a ball high. Three for his last 12 with that home run. So the Pirates come in having been swept by Atlanta. They should feel uh, badly about that because Atlanta has won 11 in a row as they take on Washington tonight. Yeah, Atlanta is on a historic run. I believe the organization's top is 15 games in a row. And how about I mean that division the Phillies have gone on a run now too as they you know relieve Joe Girardi of his duties Rob Thompson the new manager they're on a streak as well. Ronald Acuna Junior in this 11 game winning streak has just gone off hitting close to 400 four home runs and for the Nats Steven Strasburg is back on the IL. Vogel back it's a high fly ball out to left O'Neill with the catch. Well tonight we're participating in the home run challenge every home run in the uh, ball games across the league raises money for prostate cancer research and so far one hundred ninety thousand dollars that's been raised in the challenge and you can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. Cardinals have been quiet in that department five home runs only hit in their last nine. Diego Castillo homered. But a 94 mile an hour fastball back in the second inning. Yeah, not sure what ultimately unlocks the power for the Cardinals, but you know that there's more there. I mean, I look top to bottom with this lineup, and everybody in there can hurt you. They've got home run potential. It's not like you want everybody swinging for the fences, but you know there's more. One ball and one strike. Going back to the Steven Strasburg, that's quite a blow for the Nationals. I, and I, I realize, like, I, I don't know if the Nationals were going to be competing for that division anyhow with some of the juggernauts that are out there and all the spending that's been there, but Steven Strasburg has been one of the best arms, but he hasn't been available. Popped up, long way to go for Gorman. Yepes, too, who wants it. It drops in, force play at second. And the pick by Tommy Edmond and a force play.
Juan Yepes, according to StatCast, by the way, has the hardest throw by any outfielder. I'm just saying, Brad. A good throw right there. Yeah. Hey, look, let's let's chalk this one up as no harm, no foul. Okay, this ball ends up dropping in between a few. A little lack of communication there between Gorman and Yepes. Sound, it seemed like Gorman thought Yepes was going to get it. Juan Yepes thought Gorman was going to get it. Either way, you end up getting the out. Now you learn from that. Catch that one next time and be good to go. There's Sawinski. Struck out on a 3-2 pitch looking. On the outside corner back at the second. had his issues with the lefty so far in his young career just six for 38 but he does have three home runs against the left handers mentioned it earlier the leader among rookies in the National League in homers and that pitch taken just a bit high two balls and no strikes Cardinals going with three of their four starters rookies in this series so you got Zach Thompson, Matthew Libertor, and Andre Pallante all scheduled to pitch in this series at start. Last time that happened, three out of four were rookies. Daniel Ponce de Leon, Austin Gomber, Jack Flaherty in 2018. Kind of figured it might have been longer ago than yeah. that, but that young man, Andre Pallante, has taken advantage of his opportunities throughout the season from coming out of seemingly nowhere for most fans out of spring training to being in the bullpen, working into higher leverage, now working into the rotation. Thompson, as you mentioned, had a down year at AAA last year, but worked back, got his mechanics in order, and finds himself in the big leagues making his first start. Matthew Libertor, everybody's been waiting the arrival. He'll make his fourth start, and we've seen a mixed bag from him. You certainly see the skill set that was there. He had a really nice start against the Brewers at home. Ended up going five scoreless in that one. Well, of concern offensively for the Pirates has been what they're doing with runners in scoring position. They're hitting just 201 with runners in scoring position on the year. And a fly ball lifted to Dylan Carlson. He'll back up and makes the catch. Pirates strand a pair. They've left four on. We're midway through four. And Pittsburgh with a one run lead. O'Neill struck out on a curveball. The outer half is first time up. I got Tyler O'Neill turning around a fastball here. Finding one in the count. You know he drives the fastball well anyhow. If Keller falls behind, might be with the breaking ball. Why don't you just come out? This is why you're paid an enormous amount of money to make educated guesses and to say he's about ready to hit home run. Okay, that's the that's the breaking ball. Uh-huh. Now, you, you think he's going to get a fastball at some point. And yeah. you said, Brad, if I, and I'll ask Rick. Rick, he said a home run, right? Yep. Rick agrees. I was easing into it, Dan. I was, no, you weren't. I was just setting the table for this home run. Oh, man, that would have been fun. Just come right out. Well, why? why? Why not build the drama? Okay. Now the 2-1. Good job. Brad because this is your guy and this is your prediction you are going to call this home run what right? happens yeah no oh, just, yeah. just do the play by play here go I know you can do it the 2-2 two -two. nice good start yeah fouls it off 95 mile an hour fastball above the zone that's the one that we're talking about right there that's the one he can handle Dan this is all he you. does it. he's Let's not going right to ahead. one this is me and you. Oh, I have to jump in too. We're a team. Get a call this. Go ahead. I like your chances a little bit better. You didn't like it in the beginning? Didn't say that. I just think they're a little bit better now. I mean, I had it at like 90% before, but okay. now it's about 95. Look, he's seen a few pitches here. Chances are Keller's going to go with that breaking ball. And it's a base hit into right. O'Neill slips, and he'll get back to the bag. 
Yeah, if it was the home run, I'd have called that. I, I got you. But I'll take that too. I will too. On a very tough slider with two strikes. I mean, that's a pitch right there that Tyler O'Neill generally would have a hard time covering. You mentioned the numbers as he's come back off the IL. He's hitting for average. He's doing a lot of good things. He looks like he's doing a good job of just staying in there a little bit better as he does lose his balance, but able to pop right back up on this one. This is a good job of figuring out a way to stay on. Nice play by play work. Well, it really wasn't. I, I thought you choppy. You nailed it. Got a little nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. Here's Brendan Donovan with a runner at first. Does O'Neill want to run? Had a stolen base in the ball game yesterday, his fourth. So Donovan had a seven pitch at bat and doubled on a 3 2 pitch. His first time up. He's so good with two strikes. And here's the 0 1 pitch. Okay, here we go. Nothing in two. So 53 pitches seen in his last nine plate appearance. At 29, coming with two strikes, and he's three for eight with a walk. You're not supposed to last that long. It's not supposed to work like that. But it does for him. And the 0 2 pitch to Donovan. One and two. We already know what's going to happen. Two and two, three and two, and then we'll see what happens. Big crowd trying to make some noise on a warm night here in St. Louis. And the one two pitch. Get out of play. Just spoils another one. Curveball just off the plate. That's part of it too. You don't want the umpire to take the bat out of your hands, right? Not saying uh, that Scott Barry behind the plate is going to miss one way off, but I mean, if it's close enough to be able to foul off, then you do it. There's an art to spoiling pitches too. And the one-two pitch to Brendan Donovan with O'Neill at first. Two and two. Cardinals start a half game in front of Milwaukee tonight. Milwaukee will play at City Field beginning tomorrow. First of a three game series. On May 26, as recently as May 26, the Cardinals were four and a half out. But since that time, the Brewers have gone five and 12. And the 2 2 pitch to Donovan. Like I said, just go ahead and mark it down. It's going to get to three and two. And here we go again. The more and more you see it, the more and more you think about different places to put him in the order. You know, and Tommy Edmonds done a really nice job off the top, but I mean, he gives you another option if yeah. you want it. Let's see if they want to start Tyler O'Neill on the three two pitch. There he goes. Little bouncer right side. A race to the bag and making the play Yu Chang. He has been everywhere defensively for the Pirates here in four innings. So O'Neill at second base comes weekend coming up. They'll make their first visit to Bush Stadium June 24th through the 26th and great seats remain. Ticket start. And only $20 to see the Cardinals and the Cubs again June 24th through the 26th. Cardinals.com. Get those seats. Here's Juan Diepes. Hit a ball off the pitcher Keller, then to Chang. And they were able to get him at first. One out runner at second. Cardinals are 0 for 4 tonight with runners in scoring position. Yepes again into the shift on a hop to Yu Chang. And that's out number two. So including tonight, last seven games, Brad, the Cardinals are just 10 for 54 with runners in scoring position. They left a ton on yesterday. Yeah, they really did. And the thing about that is coming into today's game, because we do get caught in that, what have we seen lately? And lately we've seen a lot of missed opportunities. The Cardinals are fourth in baseball with runners in scoring position in terms of average. So, I mean, the numbers have been there throughout the season, but right now it's just been sluggish. There's Carlson. 
Lined out to Chang with a runner at third back in the second inning. Hard hit ball. And a shift here for the Pirates with two outs. And the first pitch to the Cardinals center fielder tonight. Inside. Cardinals have won five of six against the Pirates so far this year. And in doing so, they've scored 47 runs in the six games. Now, one of those games, they had 18, but still 47 runs in the six games. Well, give me one of those 18 spots here. Whew. On the outside corner, one ball, one strike. And the Pirates, 1 in 15. We talked about this yesterday against the Cardinals. Milwaukee, Atlanta. Matter of fact, they're 0 10 against Milwaukee and Atlanta. 23 and 19 against everybody else. Inside, two balls and one strike. First pitch, 96 degrees. Hottest game in St. Louis since 2016. When it was 96 and a 7 10 first pitch against the Dodgers. 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. It's a really nice curveball right there by Keller. Bottom just falls out of it. So 96 today. I feel like we got a good chance of breaking that tomorrow. I'd say 100%. Probably 100 plus. Is that the humidity? I don't know. <laughs> game time tomorrow. It's going to be hot. That day game. Looking forward to it. The work for that goes into it uh, tonight too you know that the training staff is all over these guys hydration like crazy what do you have Gatorade you got the different drinks that, yeah, that all hydrate you electrolytes and stuff. salt yep this evening throughout the game tomorrow I think uh, you know Ollie is going to have to be creative with how he uses his guys and it'd be tough but again, this is a series coming in against the Pirates. I mean, this is a series you, you need to win. You should win. And the 2-2. Two -two. Well, O'Neill can get way down the third base line. Key Brian Hayes essentially is at the shortstop position. So if a ball with his speed barely gets away, he might be able to score. Overcooks a breaking ball, throws it in the dirt. All of a sudden, you're tied 1-1. I mean, he can get way down the line. See Pop Warner over there talking to O'Neill. Tell him, get further, get further. Pop, by the way, the third base coach, very close to Daryl Cowell. He wears number 75, flipping the five and the seven to honor Daryl. The 2 2. Carlson pulls it foul. So when Pop first started coaching, Tony the Russo wanted him to get used to, to being around here. He said, you're going to make it to the big leagues. Manager, coach, whatever. Pop played a number of years in the Cardinal system. So go be a bullpen coach for a day. Hit fungos for a day. Traveled with us all year. That's when I first uh, had my introduction to Pop. Great guy and a great baseball man, too. Certainly is a guy that you, you could talk to about any aspect of the game. He's got insight and stuff that I, I learn something every time I sit down with Pop. Me, too. The 2-2 two -two slowly hit to the right side. And Keller to the bag. Through four innings, the Cardinals have left five on. Pittsburgh with a 1-0 lead. I guess they're they're always like they, they're so they draw so well. I guess you like a hundred home games. And everybody we, else gets 80. Yeah, we, we get more home games because we draw. Now you were kind of rattling off some of the guard the Cardinal greats because you said your dad. Like was a big Gibson fan, so you knew all the Cardinal. Breaks. I mean, I, I, you know, you got your, uh, you know, you got your Ozzy Smiths, you got your Gibsons, you got your uh, Willie McGee's, you know, Al Herboski wasn't Al Herboski. We work with Al. Yeah. The Mad Hungarian. The Mad Hungarian is one of my favorite players. Yes. I can't wait to tell him that. <laughs> now you didn't rattle off any pirate names, but that's okay. Uh, you know, you got your Stargills and Rennie Stennets and. Um, Bonillas and Bonds is, you know, they got you know, a couple of guys. Sterling Martell is now currently a Met, you know. 
we got it. All right. So I, what I'm wondering about you, Chris, is the onstage persona. Right. Is that who you are? Like when you're home in your pajamas, maybe got slippers on. What's Chris Rock like when he's home on his own time? Uh, well, you know, I got uh, two daughters, 20 and 18. So I'm dad first. I'm dad first. Now they're kind of out of the house, so I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out who the hell I am at this point. <laughs> who do you think you are? Um, like a little Homer Simpson slash George Jefferson. You know, a little, a little mixture of the two. Wanted to ask you about you're on tour right now, summer yes. tour, and you know, baseball players play a lot of games, right? And there's a grind to it. Yeah. I would imagine as a comedian playing city after city, city. Now you're not playing Southwest, you got a private jet, got, but there's a grind to it, right? East West. Uh, there's a grind to it. Yeah, I got a today. I actually have an off day, but yeah, I do a show. I probably do five, six shows a week, uh, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. Yeah, and you gotta wake up, and you gotta work out, and you gotta eat right, and you gotta stay hydrated, and you gotta read the paper, and work on your jokes. Yeah, it's, it's not a big difference. Last thing, what's a Chris Rock workout like? What's a Chris Rock workout? <laughs> I mean, are you like just walking on the treadmill while they hand you grapes? What is? Yeah, a little walking on the treadmill, a little. Uh, you had some weight. You are eating gummy bears. I would imagine maybe someone's handing you gummy bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gummy bears, uh, protein shakes. You know, I, I, I get it in. I'm not, you know, I, I'm in decent shape. You look great, and I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. Thanks for having me. I mean, you just made the uh, the whole broadcast better because oh, you're here. Well, thank you. Now, let's hope we can, you know, Cardinals can get some runs here. Say you go know? Cardinals. Go Cardinals. That's a good place for you to take it, Danny. I love it. He is one of my all-time favorites. And Chris Rock is too. So Jim does, you know, he's one of my all-time favorites. But so is Chris Rock. That was great. Good job, Jim. Absolutely. And how about that? One of Chris Rock's favorite Cardinals, Al Roboski, the Mad Hungarian. Oh, there's a lot I took away from that interview. And that was number one. So, Hungo, if you're listening, come on down and get the suite with uh, Chris Rock and tell us about it. We can live vicariously through you. Sure can. You think he can get us in there? Oh, he would. He'd, he'd let you, and he'd, he'd well, hold that big, one. He'd hold that one against me. You got a big job to do, you yeah. Know? Not you, Dan. Slowly hit, and Thompson barehands it. Underhands. Marcano retired. First time he has not reached base tonight. As Chang advances to second. It's a good job by Zach Thompson to bounce off the mound. Went with the old bare hand. PFP work on these things all the time. Spend all of spring training so you don't botch one of those plays. Tell you what, the cat would be phenomenal. And I mean this sincerely. Phenomenal on the red carpet. You put him in like the Oscars or you know some type of music award. You know, he's a little out of place. And that's what makes it perfect. He asks all the right questions. Yes, he does. You know, he's a baseball guy. It's fouled back. Chris Rock, the Ego Death World Tour, Stiefel Theater. He's in town for. Now, I enjoyed, personally, I thought his best character was Benny Robinson, also known as Pookie, in New Jack City. Very good in that movie. 0 1 pitch. And if you tell me you haven't seen that one, that goes right next to Hoosiers. You haven't seen it. Well, of course I've seen it. Are you? You haven't seen it. New Jack City? Come on. I haven't seen it. But what's wrong with this guy? I'm gonna see it right after I watch Hoosiers. Foul back. Probably should have been one of the questions if Chris Rock has seen Hoosiers. Oh, it could have been. I bet he has. I guarantee he has. Right. Yeah. You haven't seen New Jack City, and you haven't seen Hoosiers. Tonight's the night. You know? I, I guess so. You got you to knock out one of them tonight after the game. I got a doubleheader tomorrow. I got to prep. I understand that, but that'll cover a couple of innings at least. You got a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an 0-2 pitch to Reynolds. And the foul ball. Actually hit that twice. So Brian Reynolds at the plate. The Kia player profile. Last four games, 10 for 15. 
Three extra base hits. Five runs batted in against Atlanta. So he had 10 hits and he comes in with 89 total bases tops among National League center fielders. And the 0 2 pitch. One and two. And the one two. That's it out of play. By the way, our buddy and a Cardinal Hall of Famer has chimed in to both of us and letting us know that he thinks that that is the best interview that Jim has ever done. Matt Holiday chiming in to give the uh, the cats some kudos. It was good. It was very good. He also followed up and chiming in that I should be very disappointed in myself for not watching Hoosiers. Is that what he said? Something like that. There's a check on the runner at second. Let me look at. No, that's not quite what he said, but it was the gist of the it. The gist of it is that, yeah. Seventh pitch coming in the at bat to Brian Reynolds, who is over two tonight. One out runner at second. And the one two pitch on its way. Lined into right field and a base hit. Yepes will hit the cut. Nope, scoots by Goldie, but no damage done. Runners at the corners for Pittsburgh. The Chevy pitch tracks. I just showed you how hot Reynolds has been here last series, 10 for 15. Well, this is just this is the reason you pick up these hits. The ball elevated a little bit right there. It's a changeup that stayed up from Thompson, and he drives it to right. Well, we have a moment. Quick word from Great Southern Bank. This moment brought to you by Great Southern Bank. With flexible loan options and a dedicated team in your corner, a loan from Great Southern can bring those lifetime investments within reach. It's a big spot in this game now. One run lead for the Pirates with one out runners at the corners here in the top of five. And Key Brian Hayes coming up. Yeah, this is a spot that I really was hoping in this ball game Thompson wouldn't find himself in. It's not first and third with, with, with one out. It's in a game where the Cardinals haven't scored any runs. It really felt like this was going to be one against Keller where the Cardinals would be on the board. He wouldn't be working, you know, on a tightrope right now, but time to bear down, make some big pitches. And the first pitch to keep Brian Hayes taking eyes hit safely in 10 of his last 14. 291 in that span. He's been a very good hitter in his young career here at Bush Stadium, well above the 300 mark. Infield in a few steps, shift on the left side, and a fastball. <laughs> Call the ball. Down, I guess. Mm. That's a big swing pitch right there. Sure is. 2 0, oh, and not going to make a much better pitch right down the middle. And the 2-0 to Hayes, who is 0 for 2 tonight. Just off the plate. 3-0 as Thompson steps away. Swinging on 3-0 and, oh and a base hit into right. You can see that coming. And it's 2-0 Pittsburgh. Key Brian Hayes brings in a team-high 22nd run batted in. Chang scores. Three hits in the inning. The pitch here is a fastball. It's 94 at the bottom of the zone. It's, it's an identical pitch to the one that he threw on the 1-0 that wasn't called. But a really nice job here, 3-0. If you're, you're Keith Brian Hayes, you're just looking for a fastball. It's the only thing that you're looking to hit right there. Not a terrible location, but just too much in the middle of the plate. Nice job by him. Runners at first and second. 
Michael Chavis and a fastball taken eye. Well, the Pirates come in having lost six straight. Just nine wins in their last 24, but now have jumped out to a 2 0 lead. And the 1 0 pitch with two runners on. In for a strike, one ball, one strike, no activity in the St. Louis bullpen. 78 pitches on the night. We've talked about this before, but you look at the central right now. The key to it is what our team's going to be able to do against the Pirates. What are the Brewers and the Cardinals going to do against the Reds? Probably the Cubs as well. And the 1 1 into the gap into deep left center field. And this ball is gone. A three run homer, Michael Chavis. And Pittsburgh has busted it wide open here in the top of five. Five nothing Pirates. Well, you remember the opening series, it was Chavis with the big blast against Steven Matz. It was a hanging breaking ball that he hit out of the ballpark this time off Zach Thompson. It's a changeup that just stays up. Fourth home run against lefties, hitting above 330, coming into play against left handed pitching. And that one hurts. They have out hit the Cardinals 7 5, and it's now a 5 0 lead. Fastball high to Vogelback. Crowd all of a sudden quiet. That's his eighth run batted in against St. Louis this year. Vogel back is over two. Grounded out and flied out. Two balls and a strike. Well, bullpen starting to stir a little bit for the Cardinals. Nick Whitgren getting up and throwing. You'd love to see Thompson here get through this. Dolly Redden, happy birthday. 101. 101st birthday for Dolly. Never misses our telecast. Happy birthday. Maybe the Cardinals can come back and give you a present tonight. Three and two with one out, nobody on. Pitch number 85 coming up for Thompson. Well, you know it's in play. Just got to keep it where it is. This Cardinals offense has been slow here really in the last six games. Line to center. Carlson makes the catch. Almost carried over his glove, but he makes the play. Vogelback is 0 for 3. That Vogelback's a pretty strong dude. That ball was carrying 106 miles an hour off the bat. Didn't even look like a big swing by him. Just put a charge into it. Diego Castillo is homered. And that got it started for the Pirates. Back in the second inning, a solo home run and his third of the year. He's driven in 11. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here, most of the damage has just been up. The Castillo, his was up, and it was up and in. And if you get it up and in off the plate to Castillo, you can really get him to expand his zone there. But the home run that he hit was still uh, you know, on the plate, able to get the barrel to it. We just saw the hanging changeup to Chavis. Just got to be able to execute some of these pitches, specifically the changeup and that curveball. I don't mind that one, you know, to uh, away from them, but you'd like to see some of these secondary pitches down in the zone. And the 0 2. Little bit low. Evens it up at two and two. And that's where you want to miss with the changeup, though. I mean, you want to be right under the zone with it. He's really focusing on staying down there. That's a couple of them in a row. And the next by Thompson. 
and way out in front. I would imagine Brad this would be his final inning of work. 90 plus pitches after this next delivery. Yeah absolutely and uh, you'd have obviously loved to see him limit the damage there just kind of comes back to a pitch but we'll see if this Cardinals offense got anything in him to get him off the hook. And the 2 2 popped up and a souvenir here at Bush Stadium. Thirty fourth pitch of the inning coming up from Zach Thompson and the two two. Rounder. Oh, backhanded play by Donovan. Gets up and throws a strike to first. Great play, Brendan Donovan down at the hot corner for St. Louis. Pirates, a four-run fifth inning. They lead it 5-0. It's the Cardinals. There's Kisner, snapped in 0 for 17. It's been a, a tight zone from our home plate umpire. And by no means am I putting the blame on him because you got to make the pitches. But swing pitch on a strike, instead of being one and one, you're two and oh, you fall behind. I mean, there, there's just a couple of these pitches that have not gone Thompson's way, and it, it's it's cost. Well, you're right. It, it did change uh, a little bit of that inning. At the end of the day, though, change up that ends up being middle and up. That that's the one that really hurt him by Chavis. Hit up the middle. Chang backhands, throws. Oh, he got him! An incredible play by Yu Chang to Rob Kisner. That is one of the best plays by a second baseman we have seen all year. Yu Chang makes this throw from his seat. I mean, he is sitting there, strong throw, way to range up the middle. He has been all over the place. I want to see a fitness tracker on this guy today. He's seen every piece of this field. Your BJC difference maker. What a throw to get Andrew Kisner. That's just an awesome play from the seat of his pants. It had something on it on the fly to get Kisner. Got to buy a couple steps. Wow. Man, is that a good play. Here's Tommy Edmond. The top of the lineup, Tommy is 0 for 2. And the 1 1 pitch, two strikes on Tommy. Michael A. Taylor, his catch with Kansas City earlier this year in center to rob a home run full speed, one of the best plays we've seen defensively from the opposition. That's the other one. That was a just, I mean, that's where you tip your cap and you say, man, that's a great play. And it's not supposed to happen. Yeah. And it's not like Andrew Kisner pulled up at all on that. He, he hit it. He was busting out of the box, but Yu Chang just made a highlight real play that I got a feeling we're going to see a few more times this year. The 2 2 and a strikeout of Tommy Edmond. Well, with a five-run cushion, it looks like Keller's getting even more comfortable. That's the best breaking ball I think he's thrown all day. He's thrown some good ones. That one right there stayed back on it. 12-6 bender to get Tommy Edmond. So two outs, a shift on the right side, and strike one on Nolan Gorman. Single to left, fly to right, one for two. So he covered 113 feet to get to that. He had 71.2 miles per hour on the throw from the seat of his pants. That's awesome. That's like my best bolt now. Well, maybe actually, <laughs> maybe not even. Who knows? Yeah, impressive. His whole day's been impressive. There have been a couple of plays that he has flagged now, maybe hasn't made the, the throw part of it. But gosh, been all over. It's big league baseball, man. Yes, These are the is. best in the world on display. That's great. 
And the one two pitch to Nolan Gorman. And that is hit out of play. Remember, Gorman made his debut against Pittsburgh, and in that weekend series at PNC Park, five for ten, couple of doubles. It was an interesting couple of weeks for Gorman, wasn't it? Five for ten. Yeah. And then 0 for his next 11 with seven punch outs. Then makes the huge adjustment of keeping that front foot down. Check swing did not go, and it's a count of two and two. And then he went seven for his next 10. I mean, it's that, that's it's his streaky. game. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that's the game, too. You have to be able to make adjustments. For him to make as big a one as eliminating a big step in his first couple of weeks in the big leagues, that's something. You find that the strike zone, generally speaking, from a pitcher's perspective, it's been shrinking. And I mean that sincerely. I, I just think this, sometimes we get to these games and the strike zone is just so tight. As Gorman lifts it in the air out to center. Yeah, I'm all for expanding the strike I'm zone. I'm sure you are. I'm right, in. Well, we talked about it all night. Yu Chang has been everywhere, but this play is one he won't forget anytime soon. Robin Kisner. Pirates, 5 nuts in. Threw an inning yesterday, gave up a base hit, no runs, 10 pitches, seven of which were strikes. Our Chevy called to the pen. So Zach Thompson gives up seven hits, five runs, and four of those coming in the fifth inning. How would you look at the performance tonight? Yeah, I would think that uh, a lot like we've seen a couple of Matthew Libertors, it's just the mistakes get hit at this level. And uh, I feel like that was it. You see the stuff. The stuff absolutely plays for Thompson as he's got that fastball running up there in the mid-90s. Really like the breaking ball that he has, the ability to throw for a strike to start off a hitter or get back into a count. But just got to work your sights down with a couple of those pitches a little bit better. The fastball plays at the top of the zone. It's the secondary stuff you need to see down. And the 0-1 pitch, take it for a ball. The Cardinals bullpen, the record 16 and five, second in the National League in relief wins, and they've got to come back tonight, trailing five nothing. Sawinski is seeing McFarland. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Heineman, who's on deck, is 0 for 2 as a walk against TJ. And then we'll see Yu Chang. And the 1 2 just missed again. A swing and a miss. And a strikeout for TJ to start his night. It'd be interesting here, Brad, to see how long Ali wants to go with some of the relievers. Maybe multiple innings out of TJ with two games coming up tomorrow. Yeah, I think that TJ McFarlane has shown you in the past that he can do that. He can extend. He's also a guy that can get really quick outs. It's not always going to be the punch out. By the way, I like the life on his sinker right now. Looks like it's coming out of his hand very well, but big day tomorrow, hot day tomorrow. Good change up right there by TJ. So you do want to see if you can maximize things. Matthew Libertor in game one, as you mentioned before, Dan, you're not not exactly sure what you're going to get as far as innings go. You believe that in the nightcap, Miles Michaelis has proven that he's going to get you deeper and deeper into the games. The following day, it's Andre Pallante, who went five and a third last time out. He was very good. Rounder backhanded by Donovan settles and makes the play. Two outs and it brings in Yu Chang. Anywhere you put him, he's making plays. Yes, he is. And he makes it look easy. I mean, this is a play where he had a range to his right, makes the good strong throw. Saw him in Tampa Bay make a couple of great plays. At second base, second base, we've seen him in right field. Arenado serving as the DH tonight. 
Shocking, he's got dirt all over. That probably happened in warm-ups. Hit foul up the first base line. Well, Chang at the plate. Had a ball that he hit out to center that was run down by Dylan Carlson. Very good play, and then he singled to right and scored part of the four-run fifth inning for the Buckos. Outside, one ball, one strike. The Cardinals will have the heart of their lineup coming up. Chang was acquired from Cleveland back on May 30th. Slow start, three for 16. Does have a double. Run batted in, seven strikeouts. But you play defense like he has tonight, you're going to get a look. You find a spot for him. That's for sure. Especially you've got a young team like this. You need to be able to lock down games with defense. Nice play by O'Neill. The catch in left field. And a 1-2-3 for T.J. McFarland coming up for St. Louis in the home half of the sixth. Goldschmidt, Arenado. And Tyler O'Neill, Cardinal up. And the first pitch taken for a strike. Goldschmidt has walked. As it infield it. And Goldschmidt finds the gap in right center. All the way to the wall. And Goldie standing up at second base with his 20th double of the year. If a starter gets to Goldie and he faces him a third time, you better watch out. Hitting close to 500 third time up against a starting pitcher. Yeah, not shocking either, right? Once Paul Goldschmidt sees what you have a couple of times, this is the curveball right here from Keller. It stays up a little bit and just goes the other way with it. Pretty nice, easy swing. Hustling out of the box just in case that thing's bobbled in the outfield at all. That's something you always see Goldie do. Like that ball, we, you know it's a double off the bat, but he's going to hustle just in case. You know, you never know. First pitch to Nolan Arnato. That's taken eye. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. StatCast era beginning in 2015. And the home runs by direction for the Cardinal third baseman and tonight serving as the DH. A lot of power to left, obviously, but can hit him in all directions. And he lines it into center. And that will be a catch called by the first base umpire. And that is Ben May, as he had the best look at it from that angle. So he called it a catch. And that play is reviewable. We'll see if the Cardinals do want to review it. It's a really nice play right here by Brian Reynolds. Has to come on in on this thing. Sinking liner does corral it. It's 105 off the bat. That is difficult. And obviously a catch, so no challenge. And Tyler O'Neill struck out, swinging on a curveball on the outer half and single to right field. So one out runner at second shift on the left side and the first pitch to O'Neill strike one Well, and that's got to be the thought here chances are Keller's going to continue to pitch you away a lot of off speed stuff can you shoot it that way got to chip away one swing of the bat's not going to get you right back into this ball game have to chip away Paul Goldschmidt 10th season he's collected 20 or more doubles done it every year except the COVID season at his rookie year in which he played in only 48 games. The 0-1. One ball and one strike. Really has been just a model of consistency. The Cardinal first baseman is putting together an MVP type year. The 1-1 is a base hit out to left as Goldie had to wait to make sure that Castillo didn't catch it. And runners at the corners for St. Louis. This is just the quick hands of Tyler O'Neill. We were talking a second ago about looking away. Chances are he's going to work you that way. Well, this time it's the sinker in, and he trusts his hand, is able to get the bat to it. He doesn't barrel this thing, but it's enough to get it out there. There's good look at Goldie. The good base running pauses there to make sure Castillo doesn't flag that. It's a nice job by Tyler O'Neill. 
So one out and two on. And that's going to be it. Anthony Bonda, the only lefty they have in their bullpen. Coming in when we come back. With 162 games in a season, I do a lot of traveling, leaving no time to worry about the curveballs life throws at you, like an unexpected car breakdown. That's why I called the all-star team at CarShield. CarShield is the ultimate closer against out-of-warranty vehicle repairs. Their administrators help pay for expensive car repairs so I don't have to. Now that's what I call good defense, especially when you consider plans can cover your engine, transmission, air conditioning, electrical, and up to 6,000 parts and systems. And as a bonus, plans through CarShield include rental car options, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and courtesy towing at no additional charge. Car Shield comes in clutch for drivers when they need it most. Best of all, they're a true hometown hero right here in St. Louis. Don't drive another mile until you call Car Shield. Call now. Power, durability, comfort. This season, you could have it all with a bad boy in your garage. Every bad boy is built from scratch in the heart of America. Built to outlast the lifetime. Bad boys are fully welded with heavy gauge steel construction. Engineered for all day comfort. Powered by high horsepower engines. And deliver the perfect cut. This season is the season for a bad boy. Mo with an attitude. Get 100% MLB Verified tickets easier than ever on StubHub, official partner of the Cardinals. Wide a selection of seats and prices, so look up your seat view before you purchase so you know your view of the field. Tickets available on StubHub up until the first pitch. Anthony Bonda, three straight scoreless appearances, two and a third since allowing two runs. The first of this month at Dodger Stadium in relief of Keller went five and a third, seven hits, struck out two, walked one, and he's responsible for the runners at first and third. So the lefty Bonda is in. And I'm sure the opposition is saying, well, we're gonna we're gonna go lefty lefty on Brendan Donovan. Well, Donovan very good in the minor leagues. Where he was eight for nineteen against lefties to start the season this year. Hit three eighteen last year, two ninety-nine. The year before, 263 right now against lefties here in the major leagues. We haven't seen a matchup you don't feel comfortable with with Donovan. First pitch, a ball. Hit a seven pitch at bat. Single to left. Or rather, a double to left, excuse me. That was in the second. Then took the count to three and two in the fourth inning and grounded out. Runners at the corners and the 1 0 pitch to Brendan Donovan. A ball and a strike. There's a changeup right there by Bonda. That's a pitch. If he leaves that elevated, you could absolutely see Donovan hooking down the line for extra bases. And the 1 1 pitch to Donovan. Runner goes from first. Pitch taken inside. Diving for second and a stolen base, Tyler O'Neill. O'Neill with a stolen base, number five. Got to put the pressure on. It's a good jump. He's got great speed. They get another guy in scoring position for Donovan, who's been working counts and getting his hits. That's it. I mean, chip away again, as we talked about. You get a knock here, you feel really comfortable. And they 1 1. Outside, Juan Yepes at the on deck circle. Right before our first pitch, Dwayne Underwood Jr. put on the COVID IL right at game time. So they're down a reliever from the right side. This is the only lefty that they have in their pen. 3 1 pitch to Donovan. Base hit. Out to right. Down into the corner. Two runs will score. Brendan Donovan with his second double of the night. St. Louis on the board, and it's now a 5 2 game. There he goes. That's the changeup we were talking about. Elevated. He's able to hook it down the line for extra bases. Drives in two. 
Just a good approach. To be able to handle that pitch, though, from the lefty, you have to stay in. If he bails on this pitch, he's not going to be able to hit it with authority. He's balanced. He stays back, gets the head to it, and shoots it right down the line. What a job. Well, you called it, partner. You said, hey, if he hangs it, you can hook it. That's what he did. Good call, and now it's a 5-2 game. And some life here at Bush Stadium. There's Juan Yepes at the two-run homer in the ninth inning yesterday. One out, runner at second base. Pitch taken high. Juan is two for his last six with runners in scoring position. Hit the ball hard both times tonight. One time was off a of Keller, turned into an out with the second baseman Chang there, and then hit one right at Chang up the middle into the shift. One and one. And the one one pitch. Just something to think about, but they've got only one lefty. Ideally, if you're going to use Albert Pujols, it's against the lefty. So you get to the bottom portion of the order. Is that something you think about if you're Ollie? Well, I'm sure the wheels are turning. I mean, if you if you feel like that's going to be your best matchup, you do have Harrison Bader hanging out on the bench too. You could use yeah. him as a defensive replacement. And they want to now time call. O'Neill has now stolen a base in back-to-back -back games. First time he's done that in his career. He scores on the double by Brendan Donovan, who's at second base. And some life here in game one for the Cardinals. The one-two pitch. Yepes, little flare, base hit, it's down. And the tying run will come to the plate. That's baseball. You hit two bullets, you have outs, you get a little flare, and it drops in. They say it all comes out in the wash, right? It doesn't feel like it sometimes as a hitter. I'm sure you barrel a few, but this one, it couldn't have felt good off the bat, but there's no way. You don't believe he's going to be able to get to this one. Donovan's playing it safe, though. He's got to make sure that Chavis doesn't make a crazy play on that one, get doubled up in an inning where you've got a little bit of momentum going. And Keller, all he can do is watch. Five and a third. Two runs on seven hits. And now they start to stir again in the bullpen for the Pirates. Carlson, very good at bats from this side of the plate. And Dillon hits a high fly ball in the deep right. Dylan Carlson's third home run of the year, and it is a monster in a game where the Cardinals offense couldn't get anything going early on. They get to Keller, get him out of the game, and get to the bullpen of the Pirates. A curveball right here by Bonda that hangs up and hammered by Dylan Carlson. 406 feet off the bat of Carlson, and now it's Kisner. And a pitch taken inside for a ball. Dylan is now driven in 14, and we are tied 5-5. Five, five. Well, they've woken up around Bush Stadium, haven't oh. they? And the 1-0 pitch popped up. The shallow right. Sawinski the catch. 
Well, Dan, you just mentioned it. The great at-bats that he's been taking from this side of the plate looks so comfortable. That pitch is down. It's away. He stays back and just torches this thing into the bullpen and right. The boys are all pumped up. This game flips pretty quickly, too. Now the wheels are turning again, and that's part of the manager's job. You're thinking ahead of time. All right, what relievers are we using in different spots? Totally new ball game now. Well, the change what the Cardinals want to do now, tied 5-5, looking at that seventh inning in terms of pitching, the top of the lineup coming up. Edmund is over three. Rounded out to second to short and struck out the 0 one Edmund lines it into deep right and it's off the base of the wall Tommy racing for second base Bush Stadium has erupted Well, Anthony Bond is not fooling anybody right now. Tommy Edmond covers the pitch at the top of the strike zone as well as anybody in the league. This is 95 miles an hour. It's up, letter high, and just has that nice smooth swing, able to get it driving right there in the gap. That's a pretty swing by Tommy. Nolan Gorman is due up, but it might be somebody else. I'm thinking number five. The Pirates may wait, though. They've had Stratton throwing in their pen to see who's going to come out and then make the adjustment on what they want to do. As Banda has faced five already, so the three batter minimum. And where is Nolan Gorman? And Bader now hopping out. Jim reporting on the pregame show, Bader was not in the starting lineup because the plan is to play him in both games tomorrow, the doubleheader. So Bader was announced. Pirates are waiting for that. The Cardinals are lucky. It took forever to get somebody out of that dugout. Back with more in a moment. Bit surprising. The 175 average against the lefties, but he's really improved against the righties. He certainly has. Even last year, and the splits weren't that big, but he was better against right-handed pitching last year than lefties. And there is strike one. But that right there, that's the nemesis, right? It's that slider down and away from Harrison Bader. I think we've seen him do such a better job of being able to recognize that pitch, lay off of it, trying to jump on something early in this count. We'll see if he's able to lay off of it as this at-bat continues. And the next to Bader. Off the plate, one and one. Stratton last pitched on the 11th against Atlanta. He saw five batters, did not record an out. Three hits, five earned. Gave up a home run in 16 pitches. Been there. <laughs> you know the feeling, huh? Not great. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Harrison Bader. Ooh, that was it. One and two. Tommy Edmond, who's at second base against relief pitching we talked about it we mentioned it a lot he's so good against these guys coming in in these late situations his fourth double nine extra base hits against relievers this year he's got a lot of guys coming out of bullpens that throw hard right and that was the case it was another fastball up in the zone by Bonda and he, he covers up and he covers velocity so well the one two is popped up key Brian Hayes under it and he'll make the catch the Cardinals pick up five, and we have a new game here at Bush Stadium. Dylan Carlson, home run number three. Bush Stadium erupted, and we're tied at five. Zach Thompson in his home debut is off the hook. T.J. McFarland came in at a 1-2-3. 
Top of the sixth, he's got the seventh. There's Marcano, so you got a lefty, then a switch hitter, then Key Brian Hayes. So it could be just one, maybe two that McFarland will face in this inning. And the first pitch, a strike. Well, how about the two different spots that McFarland finds himself in? He's coming into a 5 0 ball game, finds himself in a tie one now, and these are more of the games that McFarland has been accustomed to being in as a member of the Cardinals. Sosa will go into the spot occupied by Juan Yepes in the seven position in the Cardinal lineup. Bader obviously staying in the second spot. And McFarland in relief of Thompson who went five innings five runs on seven hits gave up a pair of home runs. Marcano on base twice with a walk and a single to shallow center. And it's a count of one ball and two strikes. And the one two pitch just off the plate and it's two and two. And the next by McFarland. Cal runs full. I like the idea there. I throw the same thing again. Sinker down and away. Let him try to beat you. Marcano been very good this season against anything other than the fastball. Lines it. Oh, what a catch. Tommy Edman. Short second. Doesn't matter. The top of his leap. He pulls it in and timed it perfectly. Right guy, right spot again. I mean, you, you nailed it. You cannot catch that if he didn't time it perfect. That's a big time ups right there by Tommy Edmond to get to this one. Oh my goodness, what a play. McFarland, four up, four down, and a little help from his defense. And Marcano, he could not believe it. Giovanni Gallegos coming on in a 5-5 game at the top of the seventh when we come back. He goes. A couple of days of rest, his 23rd appearance. Pitched on the 10th of this month over the weekend against the Reds. It was a scoreless inning, but it didn't come without any drama. Remember, he walked three at 33 pitches in that appearance. Yeah, it's the entertainment business, Dan. It was entertaining. I don't want to be as entertained this time. I don't think that Giovanni Gallegos would like that either as they're working with pitch comm, trying to make sure that hearing everything the way that he wants to and just comes down to pepper and strikes. There were a couple of close calls in that ball game, as you remember, that didn't go Gio's way, but credit to him. He didn't let those affect them. Ended up going out there, getting the out, getting the scoreless inning. So Brian Reynolds has 10 home runs to lead the Pirates, eight of the 10 have come from this side of the plate only hitting though 223 over 300 from the right side of the plate the switch hitter looks at a fastball and a strike from Giovanni Gallegos he is one for seven five strikeouts head to head with Gio Genesis Cabrera starts to throw and get loose in the St. Louis pen. The 0 1 pitch. Well, you're down by five and then you tie it up. You know Ollie wants this in the worst way. Well, you're, you're unloading. I mean, this is uh, all your big guns are lined up. The back end of the pen. You feel like you've got something going now offensively. You've got a little bit of rhythm starting to drive the baseball. You mentioned it before the game yesterday against the Reds it was one that the Cardinals felt like kind of slipped away from him had an opportunity to sweep that series and a good pitch and a way out in front took some off it and it's one and two Donovan the third baseman now on the second base side of the bag was so said short Tommy Edmond into shallow right on the grass.
Here's a one-two pitch, Giovanni Gallegos. Couldn't hold up, and the strikeout. Here's Key Brian Hayes. RBI single to right field on a 3-0 pitch back in the fifth against Thompson. Drove in his 22nd, grounded into a fielder's choice, also flied out to left. Two outs and nobody on. The first pitch to him. Fouled back, and what a cut. I stay out there, too. I'm going to stay away from Key Brian Hayes. If you're going to go in, go in off the plate. No one throwing for the Pirates in their pen. It'll be Stratton. He will face Goldschmidt, Arenado, and O'Neill coming up. The 0 1 pitch to the Pirates third baseman. Nothing and two. Our crowd tonight, 37,398, 37,398. And the 0 2 pitch. Fouled back. Well, we saw the strikeout from Geo of Brian Reynolds. Went with the fastball up and in, tied him up. Brian Hayes will swing at the pitch up above the zone also. And the 0-2 pitch. He tried to go up there. Cardinals are trying to send the Pirates to their seventh consecutive loss. Well, those are the type of games these are when you're losing. You almost expect that to happen. You're waiting for it to slip away. The one two popped up. Shallow center field. Bader casually coming in to make the catch. Time to stretch in what has been an entertaining night of baseball. The big guys coming up tonight. One base twice. Check that three times. Infield hit, double, and a walk. First pitch, strike one. Stratton came in to finish off the Cardinals in the home half of the sixth with Edmund at second, and he got Bader to pop out. The 0 1. Gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. Here's a 1-1. Goldschmidt with the walk in the first, his 33rd to lead the club. Then he had the infield hit in the third. Double to right center on a curveball. And his 20th double of the year. Not afraid to go the other way as he's shown you. Might have to do it again here. Fastball up and in. Chances are he's going to get that slider away. Fastball. Three and one, Nolan Arenado. On deck. Cardinals were down 5 0 in this game and have come back to tie it at 5. What does Goldie do on a 3 1 pitch? Here we go. 3 and 2. With two strikes. Highest OPS on base plus slugging 883 ahead of Devers, Martinez, Judge, and Crawford. By over 100 points? Wow. Get it, Goldie. Not sure I'd feel comfortable if I were Stratton right now. 3 2 pitch driven out to deep left. This baby is out of here. Cardinals have their first lead. Goal.
Fans are going crazy at Bush Stadium. Just showed the numbers. Two strikes, one Goldie does. Well, he's going to turn around that pitch. It's a 94 mile an hour fastball down and in. His last at bat, curveball down and away. Drives it in the right center gap. This time, drops a head on a fastball. This guy is so, so good. 420 feet off the bat of Paul Goldschmidt on base four times tonight. Arenado lines it into center. That'll be the first out. Thanks to Paul Goldschmidt. Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. Second time that Arenado has hit the ball hard and lined out to center. And he is hitless tonight, 0 for 4. Here's Tyler O'Neill. Run scored tonight. Two hits. And a stolen base, his fifth of the year. One out and nobody on. Shift on the left side. And a fastball in there for a strike. And the 1-1. One, one. Dan, you and I were having a conversation earlier in the ball game about the power. You know, when's that power surge coming for the Cardinals? Well, a couple of big home runs in this one. Dylan Carlson goes the other way with a three-run homer, and then Goldie puts the team ahead with his solo shot. 6-5 St. Louis lead. A ball and two strikes. Goldschmidt is seventh go-ahead home run of the year. Cardinals down five nothing have come back with six unanswered. Got him. The strikeout. And now number two here in the home half of the seventh. While we have a moment, quick word from Ryan Kelly. Danny, the credit card bills never stop. Pay them off with a cash out refinance with Ryan Kelly. Don't be afraid of the mailbox. The home loan It was Brendan Donovan. It'll be overlooked to an extent because of the three run homer by Dylan Carlson. Go ahead home run by Goldie, but one of the best at bats, and he's had a couple of really good ones. But in that sixth inning, with one out and two on, against Bonda lefty lefty matchup and a double that scores two off the bat of Brendan Donovan. Yeah, he worked it and until he found himself a change up up in the zone was able to hook it down the line. Impressive night so far by Donovan offensively defensively he's been all over it at third. Last two innings alone the Cardinals with seven hits they've scored two runs and hit two homers. It's a ball and a strike with two outs and nobody on. So Donovan, seven pitch at bat on a 3 2 pitch in the second, doubled. 3 2 in the fourth, grounded out, and then the double down into the right field corner in the sixth inning. The 1 1. Another base hit, Brendan Donovan up the middle and a three hit night. Well, find him a spot every single day somewhere on the diamond because you know Brendan Donovan is going to come up big for you. Does it again. This is a fastball up above the zone. Gets his hands to it. Shoots it right back up the box. And just keeps it rolling for the Cardinals here. Somewhere around the country, who knows where he's at, but Randy Flores has got to be smiling ear to ear with all the different players that are contributing from the various drafts that he's gotten these guys. Yes. Uh, these are major contributors. Yeah, for sure. We saw for a long time, the Cardinals still are, are developing a lot of arms, and there are good pitchers throughout the organization. But now you're seeing position players come to fruition, impact guys. Donovan being able to step in, doing what he's doing. Nolan Gorman, first rounder. You know the power potential that he's got. Sosa hits it to Key Brian Hayes in a force play at second. 420 feet and a 3 2 pitch to Goldie. Crushed. Home run number 13, and the Birds have their first lead. 
three run homer hit back in inning number five. And there's strike one. TJ McFarlane after five innings from Zach Thompson. Went an inning and a third, four up, four down. Gallegos came in the seventh inning with nobody on and one out. Got a strikeout and a flyout. And the 0 1 pitch to Chavis. In the air. Shallow right. Carlson. First out. Yeah, Vogel back who has been announced. And so Ollie will go to the pen. More than likely, and it'll be Cabrera. The hitter, head to head, he is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And our Chevy called to the pen, Henesis Cabrera. Well, you know how good Henesis Cabrera has been. You know how tough he can be on left. He's got that big breaking ball, runs it up there in the upper 90s as well. He is a tough customer. Man, it is so fun to watch this Cardinal offense click because that, that's the type of offense that they should have. When you get in a hole, you should feel like you are never out of a ball game. First pitch to Vogel back. In for a strike. Grounded out on the first pitch he saw on the second. Fly to left, lined out to center. And the 0-1 pitch with the shift on the right side. Thompson went five. Gave up seven hits, five runs. McFarland inning in a third. Gallegos in inning of scoreless baseball with a strikeout. And now Cabrera with one out here in the eighth. And the 1-1 pitch. Fastball taken low, two and one. And the two one pitch, two and two. With a good fastball right there by Cabrera to get back into the count. Let's see if he goes to that sweeping breaking ball to get the swing and miss by Vogelback. And a ground ball foul. The count of two and two. And the next full count. I say it all the time, but at this point, tight game, no walks. I say it all the time. Well, you know that this guy is dangerous, so you can't leave him a cookie, but you can. Do something on the outer half. Feel good about his chances. And a 3 2. Got him. The chase and a strikeout. Chase ball four. 23rd strikeout of the year for Cabrera. Daniel Vogelback had made up his mind before that he was going to swing. I mean, that's about the only thing that you can say. This is 97, and it was never a strike. Works out quite well for Cabrera, though, and the Cardinals now two outs in the top of the eighth. Here's Castillo, home run to left, solo shot. The first run scored in this game back in the second inning. First pitch, a strike. There's also a diving stop at third base by Donovan on a backhanded play to take a hit away. Loop to ball into shallow right turned into a force play though it's second. Check swing did not go one ball and one strike. Cardinals in their half of the eighth. 
We'll have Carlson, Kisner, and Edmund. Shift on the left side of the infield for St. Louis. And the 1 1 pitch popped up. Goldie wants it. Goldie has it. We head to the bottom of the eighth. And the Cardinals with a one run lead. And took it out of the ballpark. Big moment in this game. Goldie hit his home run to take the lead. And Cardinals looking to add to it here in the eighth. And the first pitch taken for a strike. Six of the 13 Cardinal hits have gone to the opposite field, including that home run. It's the fourth time this year the Cardinals have had six or more opposite field hits in a game. And seven is the most back in early May against Baltimore. Well, you like to see that, don't you? It's take the ball where it's pitched. Try to pull off of a lot of things. That's where you find yourself in trouble. Now, I don't know if that was a, a group thought coming into this one. Hey, let's drive the ball the other way. Let's get things going. But it's certainly been working. And the 1 1 pitch to Dylan. Carlson again, a drive in the deep right. And it's off the base of the wall. Carlson, the second base, standing up. Leadoff double in the home half of the eighth. Well, it's all right to pull the ball, too, isn't it? Especially when you get a pitch down and in that you can drop the head on. And doing it from both sides of the plate. That's it. That's it. Right here. This is a pitch. De Los Santos trying to go away. 95 in. Look how smooth this swing is. That's a pretty swing. Drops the head on it. Double off the wall. And again, just trying to add to this lead. You feel great about the back end of the Cardinal bullpen as Ryan Helsley is warming out there for the ninth. But why not give him a little cushion out there? Kisner in the third snapped his 0 for 17 with a base hit. And bunting here. In the fifth, it was the play of the night defensively. Yu Chang robbed Kisner on a backhand, a diving stop. And then from the seat of his pants, he threw it 71.2 miles per hour to catch Kisner. It was just an amazing play. Yes, it was. Andrew is also flied out to right. Yeah, that was a heck of a play by Chang right there. I don't know if that conversation with Pop Warner was about this upcoming one or the, the fact in the bunt. If you are going to sacrifice, get that bat out there early. Better job there. Instead of being late to it, just get it out. Everybody knows what you're trying to do. And the right-handed batters are just one for 11 against De Los Santos. Fourth pitcher used. Keller went five and a third. Bonda, a third of an inning. Stratton inning and a third and gave up the home run to Goldschmidt. The 1-1. One -one. Beautiful punt. Only play for Key Brian Hayes. That's Chang covering the bag and it gets away. He just flat out missed it, didn't he? I mean, it looked like it went straight through his glove. Just whiffs on this throw right here. Wow. I believe that was Chang that was covering the bag at first. Let's take a look as they had the corners coming in. Yep. And the second baseman going to cover. And he just flat out missed it. Well, we spent time talking about how great the day has been defensively for Chang on this one. Really nice bunt by Kisner and just whiffed it right there. You never see that. Wow. This will be an error on Chang, his first with the Pirates. The throw right to him. He's lucky he didn't hit his chest. And Kisner winds up at second base and the run scores on the air. And Tommy Edmond trying to pull it to the right side. Pops it up. There is Chang. And he'll make the catch. So the Cardinals now little breathing room with a two-run lead. And here is Bader. Came in in the sixth as a pinch hitter with Edmond at second to face Stratton and popped out to third to end that threat. But the Cardinals... Had already done their damage in that inning. With six hits and five runs. 
Shift on the left side. One out and a runner at second base. Foul back by Bader. This is the first career sack bunt by Kisner. He's at second base. Yeah, that wasn't exactly how I was planning on that run scoring, but nice bunt. Yes. I love the idea. Off the end of the bat, that'll roll foul. 99 out of 100 times, if not more, Major League players make that play. But you still, we talk about it all weekend, you still have to execute. Yep. You put pressure on the opposition. We talked about it a little bit also that small ball still plays. And again, not, not to that extent generally, but the idea of you get that leadoff double. You're trying to build a little bit of a cushion late, and especially with the struggles that Andrew Kisner has had at the plate recently, and he did break that skid earlier with a single, and it was a nice swing. Slider down and away. But drop that bunt down. Get that guy. His last sacrifice was at double A for Andrew Kisner. That's a deep dive, by the way. His last sacrifice bunt at double A for Kisner. That's been a couple years. It was June when he was with Springfield. Man, oh man, 2018. Just some time. He was due. That's a way to look at it. And an 0-2 pitch to Harrison Bader. Got him. And it brings in Goldie, who has been on base four times tonight. By the way, Paul Goldschmidt is a triple away from the cycle. Walked in the first, infield hit in the third, doubled and scored in the sixth. Solo home run in the seventh to put the Cardinals on top. Hitting 463 with runners in scoring position. It was his eighth home run with two strikes, third most in baseball. Judge has 10, Buxton nine, Goldie now with eight, and that made it 6-5. I'm not sure Stratton was trying to throw it there. And he leads the uh, world in the highest OPS with runners in scoring position. And I mean, you throw up everything in there, and he's he's just about done it this year. Yeah, that's right. And another really good list of the who's who around Major League Baseball. The 0-2 hangs in there. That's your triple pitch right there. It's that slider down the way. Shoot it right down that first base line and off to the races. I bet if you ask Goldie, do you know you're triple away from the cycle? I would say he'd probably go, ah, maybe, am I, huh? He would He's say, so in the moment. Yeah, he would say, I don't care. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's, he, he really doesn't. He doesn't care about it. He cares about winning baseball games. He cares about his approach. He cares about his preparation. Off the plate, and it's a count of one and two. I'm sure he'd take it, though. Oh, sure. Who wouldn't? Cardinals are due for a, a cycle. It has been quite some time. And they won two. Mark Redzelonic, the last to do it in Cardinals history. Sawinski, Heineman, and Chang do up for the Pirates in the ninth. Goldie trying to add some insurance here with a runner at second, two outs, and the 2 2 pitch. That's back to De Los Santos. He'll flip it over to first and Chavis. Cardinals get a gift from the Pirates, and it's now a two run lead just joined us they were down five to nothing going into the sixth inning and now they have a lead of seven to five they have 14 hits it's been a fun night it has been a fun night that's the offensive onslaught that the cardinals were looking for donovan with the big double dylan carlson the three-run home run to tie it goldie with a home run at the top of this or the bottom of the seventh inning to put him ahead six five i mean it has been the way that 
not the start exactly that you were looking for, but the fact that they battled back the bullpen has been solid in this one as well. And you turn it over to arguably the best reliever in baseball right now in Ryan Helsley. Got to like where you're at. Jack Sawinski. 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts and a walk. First pitch, a strike. How about this bullpen? So Chavis hit the three run homer in the fifth. And at that time, it was 5 0. Since that home run, 11 straight set down. Thompson at the final two of that inning. McFarland, inning and a third. Gallegos, an inning. Cabrera, two thirds. And now it is Helsley. Pitched over the weekend, an inning against the Reds. Couple of strikeouts. Picked up save number four. And the 1 1 pitch by Ryan Helsley. Lined out to left. That's 12 in a row. Going back. O'Neill making the catch. While well, we have a moment, quick word from Tickets for Less. Tickets for Less for a better ticketing experience. Best seats, best prices, and no surprises at checkout. This will be Cal Mitchell, the pinch hitter for Heineman. The numbers for Helsley are just ridiculous. Lefties have four hits, righties two. That's it. It's silly. Opponents coming into action today were hitting 080 against him. That's the best among qualified relievers. Line foul. It's pretty fun to come off the bench. Yeah. And get a pinch. See this? Hit. Yeah. Oh, 100, you say? Yeah. No, I was geared up for that. Elsley has struck out 32 this year. This being his 20th appearance, but 32 in 23 and two thirds innings. Nothing in two. Cardinals have really tried to be cautious in the fact that they haven't gone back to back with Helsley, give him enough rest to keep him sharp to where when he comes into a game, he's ready to go somewhat rested. Uh, they've done a good job with him so far. I, I think, you know, Ali had talked about the fact that moving forward, he'll be a little bit more aggressive with his bullpen, wanting to ease him into action this year. And the 0 2. Down the left field line and foul. Mitchell won for his last 10. Helsley has just said, here you go. That's it. Well, you I, catch I, up, go for it. I think that's the key. You're seeing him shoot balls the, that way. I think that if you. Throwing that slider for a strike again, you actually do him a favor. So if you get that fastball where Helsley wanted that one elevated, you're going to have him swing right through it. If he does throw the breaking ball, he's going to bounce it. A quick turnaround tomorrow. The doubleheader: Matthew Liberator, J.T. Brubaker, Brubaker winless this year. Matthew one and one on the air at 11:30, and the 0-2 pitch. That's the harder slider from Ryan Helsley just under the zone. I go right back to the gas. Got him. And a strikeout for Helsley. We got him with the slider. Showed him the one down and in. This one pops out arm side, but he's got him in swing mode. And the Cardinals got two in this inning. Looking for this thing down, but. It was the speed that ended up catching him off guard there for Mitchell. So two outs in a game in which the Cardinals were down 5 0, now lead it 7 5. And Perez will be the pinch hitter. A shift on the right side. Two outs, nobody on. And the first pitch by Helsley. Bounced. 
Perez is hitless in his last nine. 0 for 9. Trying to extend this game. Thompson, five. Then McFarland, Gallegos, Cabrera, and Helsley. The 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Marcano on deck. The 2 0. The OPS on base plus slug, only 268 against Helsley, second best in baseball behind JP Fireisen at 226. It was one of those trades with Fireisen worked out for both sides, didn't it? Big time. Came over from the Brewers. Willie Adamas went that way. The 2 1. Fly ball out to center. Better backing up. He's there. And the Cardinals come from five down to win it seven to five. What a ball game. That was a huge victory right there. Resilient offense. Zach Thompson had a couple of pitches that elevated on him. The Pirates made him pay for it, but the Cardinals offense had his back. The bullpen was great. What a day by Dylan Carlson, Paul Goldschmidt, Brendan Donovan, the whole crew, Tommy Edmond getting it done. Nice way to start this series against the Pirates. Well, that is a good win for St. Louis. They now have won three or four in the homestand after taking two or three against the Reds and game one tonight against the Pirates. Not too much rest. Let's do it again tomorrow. Let's play a doubleheader, and that's what we'll do. And we'll come your way at 1130. Plenty of Cardinals coverage coming up on the postgame show.